Welcome back to Dickin' Around Outdoors. We have got 1,100 miles on our Grenadier now, and it is time for sort of an initial break-in oil change. So we're gonna take a stab at changing the oil in the granny. We're gonna invite you along to watch the process. So if you're interested in a DIY oil change, you can see how we do it. And hopefully we uh, don't mess up. So not everything went well with this oil change. Nothing horrible, but we had a few wrenches thrown at us. So make sure you stay till the very end and hear what we ran into and what we had to do to fix it. So anyway, first off, let's take a look at what tools we're gonna need, and then we'll show you where the relevant parts are on the Grenadier, and then we'll get cracking. So the tools that we're gonna need for this oil change are a 32 millimeter socket for the oil filter housing, a 17 millimeter socket for the drain plug. We've got a swivel, and I'll show you why I've got that out. We're also going to need the socket wrenches. And in this case, I have two sizes simply because the 32 millimeter is a half inch drive and the 17 millimeter is three eighths inch drive. And I have then a adapter couple of uh, extenders in case we need those. And a critical item is a torque wrench. My torque wrench is a 3 8 inch drive, hence the adapter. You're gonna want a torque wrench that's able to go to 25 Newton meters or roughly 18 and a half foot pounds. I also have an oil can because we're gonna wanna make sure that we oil the seals when we put the oil filter back in. The first item that you're going to need is an oil filter kit. This is actually the BMW kit that we purchased when we picked up the Grenadier. It'll give you the part number and also a European spec motor oil. This is the factory recommended zero weight 20 Valvoline European. And we just wanna make sure that this is recommended for or meets BMW spec LL17 FE plus. And the Valvoline motor oil I had to order from the local Napa store. Luckily it was on sale. And of course, the last two things that you're going to need for the oil change is a drain pan and somewhere to put the used oil. We use our coveted by the local fast lube place where we take the oil for disposal, uh, vintage Conico oil can. Another thing that I'm going to use is a step stool. When I show you what's under the hood, you'll see that it is a bit of a stretch to get to the components. Now let's take a look at what we're actually going to be working on and where it's located in the Grenadier. First thing we need to do is pop the hood. I'm gonna apologize now for the lighting in the garage. Normally when I change oil, the vehicle is facing the other direction out into the sunshine, but given the, the Grenadier's hood position, it was too tall to actually fit facing out, so we do have to face into the front. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hood strut we're going to remove it from the front hole. We're going to take it to the back and put the hood into the maintenance position. And to put the hood in the maintenance position, you put the hook in from the fender side and you mount it into the secondary strut. And now this gives us lots of room to work under the hood. Okay, now here is where you'll notice something interesting about the design of this vehicle. Because of the way it's designed with the, the large fenders, and I assume it's European pedestrian crash test requirements, the motor sets back behind the radiator quite a bit, you have a long reach to anything you need. So for example, here is the oil filler cap. It's quite a stretch for me to get to. And the oil filter itself now why BMW did this don't know but it sits on the very back of the motor you can see it tucked down in the uh, engine bay there but it's certainly not easy to get to so the first thing that we have to do is we have to remove this plastic cover and it's just held on by a couple pegs that fit into some holes so you just lift it up and this is heavy. This one is heavy. So 
I was kind of surprised the first time I pulled this off of there at how heavy this is. They must be trying to silence the engine quite a bit, but you can see this has got a lot of molded in parts, sound deadening for the engine. So this is pretty heavy, so we need to pull that off, set that aside. Okay. And now you can see it is oh so slightly easier to get to that oil filter. So again, this is not an easy place to get to, but I'm hoping it's not too difficult. Um, let's take a look underneath and we'll show you where the oil drain plug is, and then we'll get started. Okay, we're under the engine now, and you can see the oil drain plug is right here, and it's right next to the starter. And just for reference, the transmission pan is this black plastic one behind it with this drain plug. Don't pull that plug. You don't want to pull that one out. You want this plug, which is basically right above the drive shaft joint. Okay, the first step in our oil change, hopefully this light is helping a little. The first step in our oil change is going to be to remove the oil filler cap. And I just do that to let a little air into the motor, make the draining smoother. And now let's go down, get our drain pan ready, start draining the oil out of the crankcase. Okay, I'm gonna do this very slowly because this is the first time I've changed the oil in this and I wanna make sure that what comes out of this hole is motor oil. And it sure looks like motor oil to me, if you can see it on my glove. Pretty fresh motor oil, actually. And again, we've only got 1,100 miles on this fill, but we do want to kind of get that breaking oil out. And there we go. So we're draining the oil at this point. And also make sure you have a rag down here to wipe off your drain plug. So if you can see, this thing is in there at an acute angle. I'm quite sure it's going to be a real treat to get out of there once I get the thing loose. I've still got the drain plug below unhooked and or out. I'm gonna just crack this and let this oil drain back. Okay, there we got it. All right, we've got this loose. Now one thing that I have heard about the B58 is that it likes to break oil filters inside the compartment here. So we're gonna Loosen it, and then we're gonna tighten it back up. Just kind of try to make sure that we get that cracked free on the inside. I'm gonna try to do this by hand. Since it's loosened a little, I may have to work with it. Nope, I'm gonna have to work with it a bit more. So I've got this cracked. There's some air going into the canister now. You can hear the oil draining out the bottom. So that's why I wanted to open this up before I closed up the drain plug. You want to make sure you get the oil out of here. As another hazard of this design, apparently, is that oil can splash all over the place when you pull this filter out. So I want to make sure that it drains out as much as possible before we pull this filter. So I'm just going to let this drain for a few seconds. All right, it sounds like everything has quit draining. So we're going to go ahead and just unscrew this by hand and pull the filter out. Now it's a bit of a challenging angle here to do this. It's out, I'm just gonna grab my rag. Working it through the hoses and there's your filter. So it's out of the housing. It doesn't look like we really spilled much oil. So patience is the key to making sure you don't make a mess. Loosen your filter, let it drain out before you pull it out, and leave your drain plug at the bottom open so that the oil can drain. So now, let's have a look at the new filter. First thing we need to do is take the oil filter out. Make sure you pay attention to the orientation because the two ends of the filter are different. So you just grasp the oil filter, give it a tug, and it pops out. And I just put it in my oil catch pan just to drain while I'm doing everything else. So let's have a look at the new one and show you the process here. All right, as I said earlier, this is an oil filter kit, not just an oil filter. So there are two extra items in the oil filter kit. One is a crush washer for the drain pan. And the other is a new sealing rubber gasket that goes onto 
the filter cap. So the first thing we have to do is remove the old one. If you have a little tool, something like this, they work great for removing these rubber gaskets. You just get under it, work around, pull it off of there. If you don't have that, a flat blade screwdriver works, but just be gentle with it. Don't want to scratch this up. So you remove the old O-ring. Before we install the new O-ring, we're going to go ahead and put a light coating of oil on it. It's going to make it easier to get on and also make it oiled so that when we put the cap back on, it goes in smoothly. Then we'll insert the filter into it. So let's grab the oil. So as you can see in there, there is a bracket, for lack of a better word. You just take your filter, you insert it in over that bracket and snap it. You'll hear it click. It's clicked in and now it's secure. So we're now ready to reinsert the oil filter. Again, I want to make sure these O-rings are lubed. I don't want them to be sticky. So I'm going to go ahead and get a nice generous coat of oil to the O-ring at the bottom. I want to make sure that this doesn't stick and it seals correctly. So let's go ahead and get this back in. First thing I'm going to do, just give a quick wipe down around the area here. Like I said, we didn't really spill any, but just trying to get anything down. Now we're gonna sneak this back in. Again, it's a little tight, but there we go. Make sure you get this started correctly. There we go. Sorry, you can't see this. It's pretty, pretty small space to work in. I'm just gonna crank this down hand tight. Take my socket and what I found honestly is that a smaller socket on an extension actually works better. I'm just going to tighten this down. I'm not even going to snug it up. Okay we've got it snug down at this point. We're getting the torque wrench out. I've already set it for the 25 newton meters. Last thing you want to do is get one of these on too tight because then you would be looking at a very expensive repair. Here we go. There we go. That's it. 18 and a half foot pounds, 25 Newton meters. And that is tight. Now I'm just going to take my rag, going to wipe it off. I really have to say for this job, these checker plates really are nice. I mean, I was able to go ahead and sort of lean on this, put all my weight on it. I wasn't worried about scratching the paint. These things definitely are a nice, nice option. So now let's go down, reinstall the drain plug. We've got to check to make sure the old crush washer isn't there because I didn't see it when I pulled off the uh, drain plug and uh, we'll get that buttoned up. So I'll meet you down there. And I'm gonna go ahead, clean the old, old oil off. I'm gonna just use that pick to see if by some chance there's not there was the crush washer was on it make sure you get that crush washer off of there you don't want to double up on those so as you can see it's stuck to the mounting or the mounting face make sure that comes off install the new crush washer right over your drain plug like so I start the threads and I wipe off the excess oil just to make sure the mounting surface is dry. We'll snug this back up to the same 25 Newton meters, 18 and a half foot pounds. Don't want to over tighten this. Let that crush washer do its work. There it is. At this point, the hard part of the job is done. Now we're just going to fill this up. If we worked in a metric system, it takes six and a half liters, which would be kind of easy to measure out. This requires 6.8 quarts, so we're going to put in six and then try to eyeball eight tenths of a quart. And then this oil actually has metric measurements on the bottle, so we're going to fill the six quarts and then we're going to put in another 500 milliliters and that will give us our six and a half liters. Then we'll start it up and we'll run the automatic measurements. Before we do that though, we're going to button it up put the cap, fill cap back on and start this. Just double check everything we've touched and make sure there's no oil leaking anywhere. All right, everything looks good. 
let's put that cover back on. And there is a bit of a trick to that I've noticed as well. What I noticed when I was just mucking around earlier is if you start with this very front piece here, and line it up so that it goes into place. So right here, if you can see under there, you can't see under there. Really? This bar here, this ball, start there, push that in, then go over and line up your oil filler cap. Once that's lined up, everything else pops right into place. So to me, that's much easier than trying to get it lined up all at the same time and pushing things down. All right, now we're sealed and our work here is done. So now that we've got the first oil change out of the way, what went well and what kind of threw us a curveball? First off, getting the drain, drain plug at the bottom is easy as it can be. So that was easy. Just make sure that you get that crush washer out of there. Make sure it's not still on there. Number two, I was actually surprised, given the location of that oil filter, that it actually was not that bad getting it out. But I did learn that you can do away with the swivels. Just don't bother with those. Use a short extension. And we had to use a, an adapter because the 32, again, was a half inch socket and we had a three eighths inch wrench. But once you did that with that short extension, there was enough room sort of between the motor and the top of the body that you could that you could ratchet that out of there. Now it took a lot of ratcheting, but it was but you were able to get it out of there and it came out pretty easy. So that was the first thing that surprised me and, and was a, a, a welcome surprise, if you will. So the one thing that really sort of had me worried is after we did the oil change and did that initial oil level check with the computer, because there is no dipstick in this, it came back telling us that we needed to add another liter of oil. Now we'd added the right amount of oil. I did recalculate. Uh, we had sort of underfilled it by a few ounces to get to that 6.8 quarts. But even after filling it up to where I thought we were exactly 6.8 quarts, this thing still said we were a liter short. So in a panic, panic, I went in and checked with a great resource the Grenadier Forum online, and I encourage you, if you want to do anything with a Grenadier, or you have one, or you're just curious about one, check out that Grenadier Forum. It is a wealth of information, and it's got some really, really knowledgeable people on it. And I posted up, and I said, here's what happened. I put in the right amount of oil. I said, is the, owner manu is the owner's manual wrong? Did they put in the wrong amount? Did they forget to accommodate for the fact that you've changed the filter? What's going on? And one of the folks uh, came back almost immediately and said that both his dealer and the local shop have had to put in about seven and a half to eight quarts on an oil change to get this thing to read correctly. So I did that and now everything is fine. So for whatever reason, Enios has the wrong am amount of oil. Maybe it's just the oil pan that they put in their manual. I'm not sure. But if you're going to change the oil yourself, make sure you grab an extra quart and make sure you have it on hand because it's going to take more than the 6.8 quarts. I put in 7.6, I believe, and again, everything's fine. So that's what I learned. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this is done, where everything's located, and what I sort of fumbled on and would change next time so you don't have to do that. And if you like this type of content, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner. Give us a thumbs up and share it with your like-minded friends. And as always, take care and we'll see you outdoors.